Welcome everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to understand complex numbers and how they are typically represented, how to plot complex numbers on the complex plane, how to find the conjugate of complex numbers, how to simplify complex numbers and perform mathematical operations on complex numbers, and how to recognize operations on complex numbers as being transformations of the original complex number. How are we learning it? Through the Complex Transformations Part 2 notes and the Complex Transformations Part 2 assignment. When could we use this information? To determine the amount of voltage being used in your house at different times of the year? How do we know we learned it? By getting a score of 4 on the Complex Transformations Part 2 assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over the learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. Once you've completed your Get It Started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. Next, we'll do our weekly raffle. After that, we'll go over the Complex Transformations Part 2 notes, and then I'll give you time to complete the Complex Transformations Part 2 assignment on Desmos. Once you've completed the assignment, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your Before You Go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the Reasoning with Complex Numbers study guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the Complex Transformations Part 2 notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. Introduction to transformations. So we're going to look at Z being some point on the Cartesian plane as 2 plus i. It says find the result of z plus 3 minus 2i. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 plus i and add it to 3 minus 2i. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I have 2 plus 3 and i minus 2i. So I just kind of rearrange it and then go ahead and bring them together. So 2 plus 3 is 5 and i minus 2i is negative i. So I get 5 minus i. And what we should notice as we go through this assignment is that this is a transformation of this one here. So just a reminder of the different types of transformations. A reflection is a flip over a line, so it's going to flip over. Translation is a slide, so we're going to take it and slide it around. Rotation means it spins. And dilation, or scaling, means that we're going to make it either bigger or smaller. So here's a reflection. So you can see here's our reflection. We have our triangle here, and it flips over and goes this way. We also have Simba here showing you what a reflection is as he looks into the, and sees himself in the water. Translation is a slide movement. So we have a triangle here, and we slide it over and to the right, and it becomes this one, kind of like the players on Remember the Titans here that are sliding and moving around. Rotation okay, is a spin movement, so we have our triangle here. If we spin it around, it becomes this one, kind of like Woody's head does right here. And dilation means we're going to get bigger or smaller, so we have a triangle here, and it gets bigger. Kind of like Bugs here, drinks the special stuff and becomes this big buff bunny. Now, here's what your assignment's actually going to look like today. So we're going to fill in this table. So we're given three different Zs, and we're asked to perform these different transformations on them. So in this one, we're going to add a vector. We're going to add something to it. In this one, we're going to subtract. We're going to multiply by 2, we're going to multiply by negative 1, we're going to multiply by negative 3, and we're going to take the conjugate, this is z bar here, so we're going to find the conjugate of each one. There's a video here that shows you how to uh, plot complex numbers in Desmos, so you can go ahead and watch that video now. Let's talk now about how we can plot complex numbers on the coordinate plane using Desmos. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to desmos.com, and we're going to click on Graphing Calculator. And notice it gives us a standard graph, and we need to change this to become a, an Argan diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the little wrench here. And for my x-axis, I'm going to label that RE for real. And y-axis, we're going to label that IM for imaginary. 
Now we have our real and imaginary axes. Now let's say we were trying to plot the point 3 plus 2i. So let's say that's what we're trying to plot. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to treat the first number, the, uh, the real number, as our x, and the imaginary number, the number in front of the i, as our y. So what we would do is we'd go ahead and put it in parentheses. we put 3, because that's our x, and then our y, which is 2, comma 2. And then we can label it. And now we have a graph with, and this is 3 and 2i on the complex plane. So that's how you graph and check your work for plotting complex numbers on the complex plane. There's also a video here that you can watch on complex transformations so you can see how the shapes transform. So go ahead and watch that video as well. Let's take a look now at how we can check our work when working with complex transformations using Desmos. So we'll begin by going to desmos.com and we're going to click here where it says graphing calculator. And it takes us to a page that looks like this. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our original coordinates. And the way we do that, we're going to go here to where this little plus sign is. We're going to click on that and we're going to click on table. And notice it gives me an x1 and a y1 and I'm going to enter my coordinates. So let's say my first coordinate was 2 plus i. So I'm going to make that 2 and i it's just 1i so that's 1. Now let's say my th second one was 3 plus 2i. So that's 3 and 2. And let's say my third point was uh, just i, so that's 0, 1, just like that. And notice it forms these three points, and it's supposed to form some kind of a triangle. So in order to form the triangle, we're going to go ahead and type the word polygon, and then in parentheses, we're going to put x1, comma, y1. And notice now, it forms a triangle around those points. So there's my original triangle. Now from that, we need to figure out how we can transform this. So let's say that the transformation that we're going to be coming up with, that we're told to use, is 3 plus 2i. So now, what we can do is, we're going to go ahead and type in polygon again. So polygon of, and now we're going to go ahead and put in our coordinates. So it was x1, but now we're going to add 3 to it because that's what we we're told to do, plus 3, comma, y1, and we're adding 2 to that, so plus 2, and notice now, it graphs the same triangle, but now it is moved to the right and up. And let's say that the second one said we were going to multiply by 3. So if it was like 3z was the original. So all we would do here is we're going to take our x1, instead of it being x1, we're going to multiply it by 3. And our y1, we're going to take that and multiply it by 3 as well. And now we end up with the same triangle, just scaled up with 3 as a factor. So this is how we can check our work when using complex transformations using Desmos. Let's talk now about how to sign in to Desmos to complete your work. So what we're going to do is... You're going to click on the link to go to the assignment, and it should take you to a page that looks kind of like this. And right here where it says sign in with Google, we're going to click there. And it's going to pop up with our email accounts. You're going to click on your school email account, and it should already have you logged in because you should have already been logged in using Google Classroom. From there, I'm just going to click start the activity, and it will take me into the assignment and allow me to begin. So that's how you will log in to Desmos using Google. Let's take a look now at the Complex Transformations Part 2 assignment. The assignment begins with our learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here that takes us to the Desmos activity. Go ahead and click on that link, and it should take you to a page that looks like this. We'll go ahead and click Start the Activity. The activity begins with the learning goals and success criteria. We'll go ahead and click Next. And we're going to create our original triangle using the points they gave us. So we're going to fill in the table and it will automatically create the graph for us. So our real for the first one is 2. And our imaginary is 1 because it's just i, right? So it's 1i. Second one is 2 and 4. And the third one is 0 and 1. 
and notice it created my triangle for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and click next. And now I'm going to create a new table using the transformation that it gives me. It wants me to multiply i times everything there. So when I multiply by i, this is going to become 2i. So my imaginary becomes 2. This becomes 2 also. And there is none here, so this just becomes and stays 0. Now, my imaginary, it's basically when I multiply an i times an i, I get negative 1. So this just becomes negative 1. This becomes negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4. And this one becomes negative 1. So there's my triangle. Notice it changed and looks like this now. And I'm going to do that for each of these, given the transformation that it tells me. So I'm going to multiply and divide and do whatever it asks me to do using these. And then when I get to slide 9, it's going to show me what my original triangle was right here and then what my new triangle looks like here. And it's going to ask what transformation occurred. Well, to get from here to here, I had to have rotated. So I'm going to put that as a rotation. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And I'm going to do that for each of them until I get to the end. Once I get to the end, I'll go back to my Google form and click Next. This will take me to my Before I Go. Once you fill out your Before You Go, go ahead and submit your work on Google Classroom.